how's it going today, guys? Hey, yeah, buddy. We're the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Lou. And today we're bringing you our year of the end, uh, end of the year rather, special, <laughs> where we talk about, you know, more dumb shit. Yeah, shit. Because uh, uh, that's like, you know, a requirement. You have to talk about the shit that came out in the year at the end of the year or something. I don't because know. Because reasons. I mean, everybody else is doing it. Why shouldn't <laughs> we do it? You know? Exactly. Um, but yeah, you know, we're doing this remotely again um, mm-hmm. because, you know, I'm still sort of sick and uh, still don't feel like doing much. Uh, and so, you know, Luke and I were like, hey, we don't want to put pants on. Let's do this over the exactly. internet. Um, then we've already got enough germs. We probably don't need to share anymore. Yeah, very much so. It's uh, and I'm still feeling like I'm not sick, sick anymore. You know, I've got like those uh, end of sickness symptoms, so I'm fine. I just, I mean, I'm so tired. I don't feel like, you know, getting the studio cleaned up. I don't feel like cleaning my house. I'm just like I don't want to do things, mm. so I'm gonna sit here in my moderately comfortable office chair and talk into a microphone for a little while. Because yeah. um, it's easier and lazier than walking 20 feet into the other room and sitting in a chair and talking on a microphone in there. Ah, yes. <coughs> that saves me from having to drive. <laughs> yep. Um, so, you know, so um, the Mandalorian. Let's go yeah. ahead and start right there. Um, rather than with news of the stupid, we can come back to that later. Um, oh just... man, that's what we should. <laughs> uh, at next year, maybe we should do a uh, like a, a a fucking year end news of the stupid. I I thought like, about uh, that. Like, I really did. Or something. I really yeah. did think about that. Honestly, one Actually, of the things there's I've... no reason we couldn't do that next week. Oh, whatever. Wait, I mean, there's no reason we couldn't do that in this episode. Like, fuck it, why not? Um, of course, we have a lot to do, but whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of other cool shit to talk about. But uh, yeah, Mandalorian. Uh, we just yeah. we just had the last episode of um, season one, I guess, and uh, yeah. a lot went down in that episode. Uh, just just a whole lot. Um, and it was like almost mind blowing in a way. <clears throat> I mean, on a whole, um, there's other show. Like I, think I can think of like a couple other shows I watched this year. Uh, are binged. Uh, the Mandalorian is definitely like my number one or number. It, it, I think it's even with uh, another show I'll talk about later. Um, the Mandalorian's fucking that. That show is just great. Uh, I, I'm granted I am a huge Star Wars fan. Right, right. So it it is a show that is like made for Star Wars fans completely, one hundred percent. And it hits everything, like, checks all the boxes that I, I enjoyed the fucking hell out of. Right. Um, and, yeah, the season ended in a fucking big, bad, big, bad way. They yeah. uh, they pulled a, you know, pulled off an amazing um, show there, and I can't fucking wait for more. <laughs> you know, like, for me, it's, it's one of those things where, um, before we get into the, the meat of the episode and talk about some of the things that happened during the season. Yeah. One thing I feel like Disney has done right with the Mandalorian, as opposed to like the full length movies is they took the Mandalorian, they took all of that and they just gave it to some of the Marvel people and went complete. I, I feel like they, they almost went completely hands off with it because you got John Favreau producing it, directing it and all that. You got Taika yeah. Waititi popping in there, you know, producing it, directing episodes, writing episodes. And it's like, they let people who were star Wars fans. Do yes. This yes. And, and work on it, <clears throat> work on a star Wars project rather than, I don't know what fucking little teeny ass, whatever writer's room or, uh, and, on top of that, a big, big, big thing, like number one that stands out to me, is very obviously when uh, Favreau sat down for this, he planned out 
a series. He didn't go, okay, we're going to make one episode and then we'll just let the next person come in and write the next episode. No, right. yeah, they no. sat down and wrote the series. You don't do a trilogy and go, okay, we'll do one movie and then the next movie they can just figure out. Yeah. that I think that that and getting people that are fans. This is this project was done by fans. The people who are in it are, you know, fans of Star Wars are people who like I I like I don't know. They 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 took it in a direction I think Star Wars needed to go to. Yes. Um where you kind of bring it down a little bit and it's much more self-contained. There's an entire episode where I, I can't remember who I was watching. They were laughing at the fact that the 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 prison escape episode or the yes. the breakout. Yeah. Um that whole episode takes place in like two corridors. Mm -hmm. Like the set is so bare bones easy and there are literally like what was it like five actors total on that entire episode and it was fucking baller and you can't <laughs> and the movies can't function with the tons and tons of actors and actresses that they have oh my god it's, yes like it's like this is what happens when you have competent people it's like you know it's like i say about um like the principle that applies to good horror flicks, I think that same principle applies to, to can be applied in many different instances. And it's like just keep yeah. it simple, right? Keep it small, keep it simple. And yeah. I mean that that's something that shines with this show because I'm pretty sure they have like a maximum of ten sets for the entire fucking uh, they're series. They're so you know? easy, like like. First few of the first episode takes place in desert, generic desert town or desert or more desert is where like a bunch of the episodes take place. There's like one that's in the woods. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, it's just so incredible. Uh, the, mm -hmm. You know, the cinematography is on point. The actors are on point. Like I, I, I love every casting choice they've made, you know, and there's some big names in there. There's some not so big names and it's, it's still just so good. They um, use a lot of like surprise people, like, uh, but they they do it well. Whereas in the fucking movie, it kind of like, I don't know, Jade. It seems like like people have been giving shit uh, of to J.J. Abrams for uh, this last movie for like just hiring people and giving them parts that were completely pointless, where they're just getting money for, hey, you want to come be in this movie? Oh, we'll make a million bucks, like. The uh, uh, the 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 chick um, bounty hunt, not bounty hunter, um, smuggler, I guess, in um, Rise of the Skywalker. Yeah, that, I can't remember the actress's name. She's a big actress. She worked with J.J. Abrams before. Like everyone was talking about the fact that she's in this movie. And the joke that's going around is they must have sat down and J.J. went, hey, how little do you think we can show you? and still have you make a fucking million dollars for being a part of this. <laughs> and that's exactly what they did. She wears the helmet the whole time. She has like eight lines and she's on screen for maybe a total of like a minute and a half. Right. Yeah. And the character was basically pointless. She was one of those, Hey, you can't have the thing two seconds later. Oh, here's the thing. Yeah. You're talking about Zoe like, bliss. I think. Um, yeah, I think yeah, so. she's played by Carrie Russell. Yeah. Completely like why? Just, just what, what, what the character shouldn't have even been – if the character was written in, either give the character more or why waste time with the character? Yeah, I, pretty it's, much. It, it, again, multiple movies were put into that one fucking movie, but that shows where the Mandalorian and, – and it's something that a TV show can do that movies can't where you've got that time. You can spread things out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you get characters. I'm hoping some of the characters from the first season come back in the second season. Uh, I'm glad that in this episode, um, in the last episode, actually, I guess, um, the, uh, rebel, uh, shock trooper. Yeah. Heavy trooper. She came back. Yeah. She, she's popped up a couple times in the, in the series and I'm glad that they've made her a bit of a recurring character because she's cool. She's played by, um, Oh my God. Gina Carana, Carina, I think. She she was also in Deadpool. She played the angel and yes, it, yeah. And it was just like, oh yes, like, it's she's cool such to a good see actress. her do something else. And she's still. I mean, I don't mind that she plays 
big strong female, but she's awesome at playing big strong female. Absolutely is. Yeah, no, I'm I'm completely 100% uh for it. Uh, it's just yeah, it it's great and I I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just I'm down for the for the whole thing. There's there's one thing I do worry about um uh when you get a TV show and you, and especially now because of our, uh, the way we do shows now, right. Every see, every time show comes out, everyone is like, Oh, can't wait for the next season before it's even done. We, I mean, we're guilty of the same thing. I'm totally guilty of that with this, um, and other shows that I like. And sometimes I worry that they're going to start just dragging this out mm-hmm. where I want to see a season two. I think, I think they need to really think about how long they want this to go and be like, okay, three, two or three seasons and that's it done. Yeah. We're yeah. not going to stretch it out. We're not going to make it get old. Um, it, the way they've done this show, they've done it kind of almost goes back to old television where there's that plot line that's through the whole show, but there's a lot of episodes that were like almost Star Trek esque where the episode feels completely different from the one that came before it. Right. Like it was just it's it's like a completely different planet, a completely different place, new problems, whatever. Uh, I like that. But I think that's something that can get stretched out too long. Which I hope they I, I, I don't think they'll do. I think they've got a good enough crew, but I would hope that they would decide on like three seasons and then be like, OK, next thing, because the Star Wars universe is fucking massive. It is. And while the movies, I think focus on too much of that massive universe, this show is a good example of pick a part of the universe, go down small and do something awesome Yeah. because they should never have continued the Skywalker story. It's done. It, it was done with the end of the empire. It should have been done. There shouldn't have, been, they shouldn't have continued it at all. Right. If they did anything, they should have just had like, the Jedi order was on its own, blah, blah, blah. Luke started it. And then nothing we didn't, we didn't need to have all of that connecting tissue because what they did with it, I mean, what they did was bad. I think that whole story should have been left alone. Yeah. But, they, yeah. but I mean, as soon as Disney bought the rights, you knew they were going to milk it for all the money they could get, which is, you know, I mean, of course, and that's fine. You know, that gives us like, on the one hand, that gives us more star Wars, but then on the other hand, um, it waters yeah. it down so much, you know, like, and that's basically what I feel like they've done, you know, yeah. Force Awakens was, was a good movie. I thought for what it was, it was just Star Warsy enough to get everybody back in. Um, mm-hmm. The Last Jedi was an abomination, should not exist. And I will argue that at the last, because I, I know someone who absolutely adores The Last Jedi, and I don't know how they could possibly do that. But if The Last Jedi was so good, I, I want them to explain to me why Rise of Skywalker sat there and either outright ignored or tried to undo everything that movie did. Because the, 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 I, I'm one of those people that, especially now, uh, as, and I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker, whatever the fuck. Anyway, as, as I get, uh, like longer away from when I saw that movie, um, <clears throat> like have more time to think on it and stuff. It's, it's just such a mess that I like, I can't really think of many scenes that really stand out even in the movie. Yeah. Like, like for uh, me, the only scene that does stand out is, is like the one where Holdo gets everybody off the ship and then crashes it into. Oh no, I'm not talking about um, that. I'm talking about rise of Skywalker. Oh. OK, never mind. There's, there's like three or four scenes from that that were that stand out. Holdo, the fight in the uh, throne room. Right, um, right, right. Those stick out. Rise of Skywalker doesn't have scenes like that. No. The closest I can think of is in the, the one thing that I like because it's bad is all of the cheese at the end with the emperor. How yeah. just overwhelmingly cheesy he was was hilarious to me. And I loved every second of it. Everything else is just completely forgettable. The space battle was boring as hell. Um, like, I mean, it's just, it was just kind of a mess. And it, I, I, it, it's some Star Wars stuff. It was okay, but that's almost worse than being like, yeah, it had this had a couple amazing moments, but was terrible. It's just, it, it, and I wish, I wish 
the the last Jedi was done competently, a hundred percent, because then we would have gotten a really good third movie or had the chance to, or at but, least you know like. If it was at least a halfway decent movie on its own, we would have at least gotten something on on that side on that was better than what we did get. Well, not um, just a decent movie, but a good middle movie. A right. movie, a part of it wasn't a part of a trilogy. It was right. its own. It, it was, wanted to be its own ending. It was a part of a trilogy. That was the whole problem. Like the problem with this, it was a part of a trilogy. The problem is he wanted it at the end when it was in the middle. Well, he didn't even want it to be a part of a trilogy. He he did basically the same thing, except not as blatant that JJ did, where all of the threads and things that came over from um, the Force Awakens, he basically put the put like, oh no, they don't matter. Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh nope, Snoke's gone. Oh nope, Ray's family doesn't matter. Like. He he did that subtly, whereas JJ essentially in the first five seconds is like, nope, that's fine. Nope, fuck you. Nope, fuck you, Ryan Johnson. Nope, that's stupid. But yep. uh, either way, if Ryan Johnson wrote a movie that didn't belong there at all. The only there the faces were the same, but it made, made no sense. And then to c- try and continue from that, I think Disney should have been like, nope, we fucked. It, it fucked up. We just do it at this point. We might as well just reboot. Like there was nowhere to go with it. Yeah, well, I but, mean, he like he left he left its own he left a movie that was disconjointed <clears throat> and just just there. It was it was just there. It it yeah. didn't really <clears throat> it didn't really relate to anything else except by name, and it was just there. And I still will argue until I'm blue in the face that it wasn't good. It wasn't a good Star Wars movie. It it was, it felt more like a uh, I don't know a B or C level sci fi original on the side, just with a bigger budget. Yeah, I if it was a standalone sci fi movie, I would be willing to give it the credit for okay, it's it's its own, it, it's a competent sci fi movie, it's whatever. <laughs> It's it, you try and add Star Wars to it that I it, it, it's just terrible because it's not Star Wars. That's it's, when I get yeah. really mad. It was a better done, uh, a better focused movie than Rise of Skywalker, though. I have to be honest. Rise right, of Skywalker right. was such a like blender of a movie, which I bet Rise of Skywalker has like 15 different cuts. And there's either either there's a ton of different cuts or they must have had so much fucking footage and things that they just had to cut or story parts where they like had this whole things written out and then just like nope we don't have time for that we gotta get to the next planet gotta keep it moving this can't be five hours long like that's how that movie feels it feels like uh, they just blended together a bunch of three movies and shat it out <laughs> so so i give i give i give at least that much credit to ryan johnson's abortion so but, I, um, I i gotta i gotta say disappointment um and this is related but unrelated. Yeah. Um, so, like, I have obviously we have mul- we, Luke and I both have multiple monitors. I have yeah. two. Luke has like a billion. Um, on <laughs> my on my monitors right now, I have like a giant um, folder of Legend of Zelda wallpapers because that's I'm Legend of Zelda trash, I'm Skyrim trash, and you know Star Trek trash. Right this second, and right about the time we started recording, my wallpapers changed. And the wallpaper on my secondary monitor is Legend of Zelda Star Wars themed. It's <laughs> um, Zelda is dressed as Leia with a blaster, and um, Link is dressed as Obi Wan or one of the Jedi. I can't really tell. He doesn't seem to have an actual like designation. He has a blue lightsaber shaped like the Master Sword, and they're fighting Ganondorf dressed like a Sith Lord. With two red sabers, and in the background is King Roam, the King of Hyrule, dressed as uh, another Jedi Master, and it's like this is this nice. is kind of cool. And it just randomly swapped to that right around the time we started recording. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was fated for us to talk about Star Wars. Yeah, of course we're gonna start <clears throat> Star Wars, just to just everything they did. Yeah, <laughs> god damn it. I, uh, I'm i a huge fan, and I've brought them up before, of Red Letter Media. And one of their big things is that they, they talk about the idea that there's nothing left for Star Wars. There's no there's no story left. And I obviously I disagree because I think the, the universe is big enough where there's 
a thousand different stories. You yeah, can and tell I mean, like, like if they and have them be good. Like if they wanted to sit there and say the entire extended universe is non-canon, but then sit there and, and look through that and start pulling stuff out. So you know, no, this is canon now. We're gonna do a story on it. Or we're gonna do a show. Or we're gonna base the next movie on it. Fine, that's fine. And yeah. the expanded universe has so much extra stuff and. A lot of it isn't great, but there's a lot of good still in there, I think, and there's a lot that they haven't they haven't looked into. Yeah, know? well there's a there's a lot of things they could do still with it. But I do pretty much agree that at this point, especially now, but even before now, that the as like like I said, the Skywalker story, the continuation of the the trilogy and you know, the prequels and that there's there's this shouldn't be touched it's just done it's yeah. it's been you're not going to do anything else with it and they shouldn't even touch anything on that scale of like the galactic com- like war because it's just going to be more of the same right this whole right like this continuation was more rebels fighting um fighting the a, an evil empire which made no sense because there it wasn't an evil empire it was there, there should have been the new order or the new republic and all that. And it's basically like when JJ started this whole project, he went, yeah, yeah, yeah but that doesn't matter. We're just going to wipe them out in the first order. And it was like, it was completely just a rehash from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that was a huge like right off the bat they they made a they made a massive like a massive huge mistake. And I like that movie. Um, I, they should have taken it in a completely different direction. Period. Like. Like do something where yeah you could have Jedi and Sith, but make it very specific to there's an evil Sith and we need to beat the evil Sith. Uh, mm-hmm. He's not commanding a giant fucking army, like he's you know over at a place doing a thing, taking over a planet. Do something more controlled. Right. That's just uh, Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars is going to continue no matter what. I just hope they <coughs> kind of realize some like some like flaws what what they've done i think what i'd like for them to do is um like fire kathleen kennedy (laughs) just just shoot her out of cannon (laughs) i mean yeah you know all right (laughs) what i was gonna say is significantly less um murray just like like, take a step back right take like i don't know just two years off look at what you have to die they fired people out of cannons back in the circus and they survived <laughs> <laughs> i mean all right yeah but well, my thing is like just take that step back and you know mm-hmm. what they're doing with the mandalorian let's say do that with uh you know your movies give give the properties to fans you know not necessarily john favreau don't don't sit there and overwork happy like tony stark did but sit there yeah. and like you know like give give them to, to fans. I don't know if J.J. Abrams is a fan or not necessarily. Maybe not. Maybe he is. No, maybe he's he totally. Isn't. I mean, he's totally a fan. But like, um, I mean, don't he don't turned give Star him... Trek into Star Wars for three movies. And he's was, totally a Star Wars fan. And it was awful. Okay, I will I will, I will always stand by that. Um, <laughs> Unless you're like me and wasn't a fan of Star Trek, then it was like, hey, he's right? Yeah, good no, movie. of course. But if, um, <laughs> like like if you. Like the, those three movies, like if you take Star Trek property out of it and just see them as like just standalone generic flicks, they are really good. You know, production quality is yeah. top notch. Effects are really cool. Explosions are always nice. But it's when you attach that Star Trek to them, like that's not that's not Star Trek. That's Star Wars, yeah. and that's fine. But they're two different things. You know, it's like comparing apples to bananas. Like. The only real relation is that they, they're, they're both sci-fi. Let's not do yeah. this. But it's like, I don't know. But anyway, back to The Mandalorian before we get off topic again. <laughs> um, this last episode was, was really, really cool, I, I thought. Uh, and Baby Yoda will forever be the fucking most adorable thing ever. I mean, it's just... Baby Yoda's awesome. I, I, this show, just in every way you know is awesome it's low-key as hell like the show overall is is like low-key and and just chill but it's so good when it heats up it's like yeah shoot those assholes in the face 
Um, and this episode was was one of those where they had the big fights. They had like the big shooting everything down scene, which was instigated by the robot, which was hilarious. He says that there. show. He I kept... mean, yes, go 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 go. Oh, uh, I just they 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 pulled in a lot of things like we said, pulled in things from Star Wars that you know never made it into the movies except for one little scene in um, Empire. I think yeah. where you see IG-88 with all of the uh, bounty hunters and yeah. then they, okay, IG do right. Let's do this. Let's, you know, they, and they fucking make him a character. And in this episode, he's like a real fucking character from a droid. Yeah. Uh, no. You get like, it's, uh, it's so good. And the, get- I, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the episode quite yet. Um, Even though this won't come out for like a week, but. Uh, um, yeah, it'll be a few days. Like every episode, first. yeah, every episode <laughs> is so good at having like the setup, you know, problem, and then they always all. I think every episode they basically have you know like a big action moment, um, and then like you know, the you know generally some high stakes and i mean it's it's so fucking well done it's such a good tv show um part of the episode actually got spoiled um by accident uh, oh yeah while i was sitting there because um you know on twitter of course all that shit's super popular oh, and yeah, yeah. Um, hashtag dark saber was trending and i'm like huh and then I see below it a little snippet. Fans react to the season finale of The Mandalorian. And I'm like, oh, someone shows up with a dark saber. Okay, cool. And then um, I actually yeah. sit down and, and I watched it before we recorded this. And uh, it, it was spoiled, but not in a way that spoiled. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, oh, I knew. Yeah, the, it, it's I knew one the, of the, just like Baby Yoda for the first episode. Um, everything like. It, it, it was a, it, a huge secret to the point where Disney willingly apparently has lost out on millions for from Christmas or maybe billions. I can't remember um, millions of dollars because no baby Yoda toys were ready for purchase before Christmas. And they, yeah, they've estimated like millions and millions of dollars of lost revenue because they wanted to avoid spoilers right. that badly. Right. Which uh, I, so I can like, respect because I, I, I had you know? people. I heard people saying things like, "Oh, the first time, it was already spoiled for me because I saw on Twitter, Baby Yoda's already." It's like that it doesn't really spoil anything. It's a minor. It's a fucking first episode. It's an eight episode season. Come on, still yeah. a lot more. Oh yeah. This, however, was kind of a like. I, I mean, it was a reveal. I'm. Are they saying for sure it's a saber? Because fuck it, we're just gonna spoil it anyway. Um, I I don't know. I, uh, like the, the official census from from them I I don't I don't know uh it's it totally 100% I mean, could be I mean I 100% kind of hoping. like there's only one dark saber apparently right like I I sat there and did some research after I'm done after I got done with the episode um basically there is like there's only one dark saber in the history of Star Wars and apparently it was created a long time ago by a Mandalorian who was inducted into the Jedi Order. And my research on the Darksaber suggests that this is the Darksaber. It matches the description perfectly. Yeah. And... I mean, hey, they might be pulling out. That's some deep fucking lore. Right. Because I was going to say, black lightsabers <laughs> existed in other parts of the canon. Right. Um, the, specifically, Force Awakens had black lightsabers, and at the time, that was canon by lucas right uh and i thought they existed in uh i know they existed in like kotor right and i thought they existed in some of the other um expanded stuff like the books but i guess not if they were just from this one one uh one place i was hoping it was going to end up being like a vibro uh, vibro blade but mm-hmm. if that is the backstory that makes it more interesting since this guy was a part of the fucking slaughter of the Mandalorians right. of their their homeworld or whatever you want to call it. Right, yeah, he participated in the Great Purge of Mandalore. Um, he yeah. was the leader of, of that, that incursion, so yeah. He was the moth that did it. Yeah. So, 
Now he has it, and he cuts his way out of his ship after the Mandalorian takes him down. So it's like, huh, interesting. So there's even more of that that connection between the Mandalorians and him, and and all that. So it, I don't know. It's 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 interesting to see. Though. Oh, this it looks like this came straight out of um, Rebels. Or yeah, something. yeah, probably. Um, that makes more sense if it came out of Rebels than it is new then th- that maybe is tying rebels to uh this the show then right um which i'd have to read this whole thing but that that's okay so that's interesting so that is wiping out the old canon this that is the the source of it then mm-hmm. yeah it, it comes from from that area but like the history of the dark saber is pretty pretty kind of kind of interesting i'd say so like I said, it was it was it, it's important in that it was created by the first Mandalorian inducted into the Jedi Order, who would later yeah. become the leader of Mandalore. So, yeah, and then they stole <laughs> stole it during then, the fall of the Old Republic from the Jedi. Right. Yep. And then uh, it was lost in the Great Purge and blah blah blah, and now this dude has it. Yep. So yeah, yeah that's pretty interesting actually. Yeah. Kind of kind of cool. We also um, find out the Mandalorian's name in this episode uh, because, yeah. of course, this dude knows it. And, uh, yeah. Um, what the fuck was Dijin something or another? I don't remember now. Yeah, it's fucking weird. I mean, all of <laughs> Which, them. By the way, the fact that I didn't re- even realize <clears throat> that we didn't know his fucking name this whole goddamn time speaks to how good both Pedro Pascal's like voice basically acting and voice acting how yeah. good the character is written and every it's just I had no fucking idea nope. I didn't realize it and I all have felt like really connected uh, with this character who you haven't seen his face a single time he hasn't really like is is so good <laughs> I can't sing enough praises for this fucking show yep yeah Din Djarin yeah Din Djarin for the first time you get his name um, I'm fucking Carl Weathers. It like is, I thought I wouldn't like him after the switch in, um, was it the seventh episode? It was the last episode where he, he offers the deal, right? Or was it the um, episode before? It was the seventh. Ep- it was sixth episode. Yeah. It was, it was episode okay. six. And then, and then was... he switches basically has a turn of heart after oh baby yoda heals him that's right yeah that was that was yeah because they held that off until they or, or supposedly that's why they released that episode early so it came out before the movie and then the, they had the healing scenes in the movie right and they were like oh no no see it's in the mandalorian it's 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 been canon it's a thing uh <laughs> even though it was the the setup for it in the movie was so fucking stupid of god healing go oh, who's gonna heal a snake in the desert Okay, why not just kill it? But I I get what you're saying. But anyway, yeah, or just leave. But um, yeah, that that I thought I I thought that turn was gonna bother me about because uh, it was really quick and everything. But I can't. There's there's just not really any way to like dislike Carl Weathers as a character. He's so they they don't even try to hide the fact that this is an older dude. He's not moving around much. When he's in combat in his scenes where he's blasting away at stormtroopers and shit, he's basically just kind of like walking out there and like kind of like leaning and taking a shot. Like, Pretty much, yeah. No, like so perfect. he's just an old dude. And that's what he is. That's what's gonna happen. So yeah, he's like I'm gonna stand right here and shoot a bunch of stormtroopers, y'all, keep and run out and do all that crazy shit. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. So good. But uh, uh, yeah, no. This- <laughs> This episode, like, I I like how um, IG-11 kind of, you know, turned the Mandalorian's distrust for droids around in a way. He's like, no, we need you. Like, nope, I'm going to go blow myself up. It's like, no. Yeah, especially specifically combat droids. Yeah. Um, That was a a little, I was kind of like, okay, really? Cliched. Feel, but, yeah, you yeah. feel a little bit too much for this droid, but at the same time, I you know, it, it still it didn't feel out completely out of place. It wasn't it didn't feel like uh fucking sister and brother kissing like uh Kylo and um Ray did. Or mm-hmm. anything like that, completely out of nowhere. Right. So 
I just I don't think I don't know. It was it was still good. Like I fucking I mean, I love I love the way they've done this show so much in keeping with um, the original trilogy. Right. Too, where they they have a budget, I'm sure, but they still keep a lot of things like um, practical effects. Like, yeah. There are scenes where you just IG88 100% is a fucking obvious miniature, and they're moving him with stop motion and stuff like that. Yes, but yeah. it still fucking works so goddamn well. I I mean I I actually loved that when I realized what that was. Like that is yeah. that is just. I love that. It's it's so dumb. They they could have just used, you know, standard CGI or whatever. But like they just said, "Nah, we're going to totally do this like the old-fashioned way." And I was yeah. like, "I don't know why, but I love this. It's just <laughs> I love it." <clears throat> yeah, and they do it well too because I know there's parts where he is CGI or they you know, they they go back and forth and they're CGI things and uh, they they do it they do the show fucking awesome. They did this show. It's uh, like a 10 out of 10 show, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. It's something totally worth watching. Yep. Uh, if you're into like any like sci-fi fantasy space stuff too, it's it's going to be a total watch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have much more to say. I, I just – I totally fanboy over it. It, it makes me happy that between that – um, the game that we're still, there's still like really good Star Wars content being created. Yeah. Yeah, I know that, that, that's like man, the Mandalorian is pretty much the best, uh, Star Wars thing that Disney has created so far. I'd say. <clears throat> oh, mean. oh yeah. From Disney specifically, a hundred percent. Yeah. Disney's, uh, like I, I, I think they have two good movies um and one barely mediocre movie in it or uh, uh, an okay movie with um the solo movie yeah but yeah i i fucking mandalorian is is definitely the best thing they've come up with i mean i i absolutely fucking adore it so i i'm definitely hoping for more um i don't know just just give me more mandalorian and don't fuck it up and we'll be good yeah, if they could either fire or do something with the uh, people running Lucasfilms this year and do something with e kicking EA in the ass to make them make more games like uh, Fallen Order uh, or uh, make more, like, uh, do more with focusing on the game like they did later on in Battlefront 2. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, that would make me so happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do those, um, come out with some good shit, and Star Wars can, you know, be like not the super controversial. If you, you know, if you like it, people that don't like it hate you, and if you don't like it, you're a troll and a racist and <laughs> sexist, and you don't like it because that's got a strong woman's. I no, just, no, oh my God, no. The, the internet. I don't like the, it because it's, it's a terrible it's, fucking movie. <laughs> it the is, is such a mess. It has, it, and it being a terrible movie has nothing to do with there being a strong women in it. It's a fucking terrible movie. It tells a stupid fucking <laughs> story. It has a th paper thin plot that makes no fucking sense. And the conflict in it is, on, is artificial as fuck. It's just because you have one guy who does dumb fuck shit. And you know he's going to do dumb fuck shit. And instead of saying, hey, don't worry, dumb fuck. We have a plan. Don't go do your dumb fuck shit. She completely keeps it under wraps until the very last minute after dumb fuck has done his dumb fuck shit and everything is ruined. Fuck I'm you. I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm not going to give orders. I'm just going to be keeping it a secret. I'm just going to stand because here smugly uh, because I'm a woman. You a lesson and watch everyone around me die. Basically, yes. I That's like, swear to God, she was a fucking Imperial uh, First Order plant the whole goddamn time. Anyway, they, they yeah. did nothing to explain why she was important. They did nothing to establish her as an important 
you know, powerful God. authority figure. They just said, here's a woman with purple hair that used to be Leia's friend. Okay. Why is she She's important? smarter than you and better than you. But why? What does she do? She has what has she done? What did she, she lead such, a force has against all a, odds? You know, like against like uh, the first order twenty years ago and destroyed a fleet that otherwise wouldn't have been destroyable. I don't get it. What the fuck did she do that made her so important? I don't care that she's a woman. I don't. I, it, and I would have had the same reaction had it been a man standing there doing the same shit. Why is he important? Because he has a dick between his legs? No. What? What did he do? Tell me his accomplishments. Why is he keeping his fucking everything a secret? What is the point? Do they have a plan? No? Yes? The plan was yeah. apparently keep running until Poe did some dumb fuck shit uh, and then crash the ship into another ship and kill everything. I don't fucking know. It was stupid. There was something I saw on Twitter, and I don't use Twitter very often <coughs> at all because I think it's cancer, um, that I did, I find hilarious. So one of the things that's kind of been semi-trending lately um, is uh, people talking about Rose, the character uh, from the second movie. Her screen time in Rise of Skywalker was seconds. It was nothing, right? Mm. Like, the beginning of the movie, they're leaving, and she, like, runs up to Finn and is like, oh, where are you going? Oh, I'm coming. And Finn's like, no, you have to stay here and do a thing. And then he pats her on the back and leaves. Where obviously, it, it, that that to me was the biggest fuck you to um, uh, fucking The Last Jedi. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes, absolutely. There's, there's, so that, because that there, was such an an, there was such an emphasis on that that little relationship forming, you know, because you see... Was you not, s- had no, no, like, no chemistry whatsoever and at the end she pulled the dumbest there was oh okay so anyway anyway because it's that's a whole part of it so that's an article of rose only has has blah 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 amount of screen time in this and i mean me i read that article and go good she was terrible she was the actress wasn't that great the whole storyline was fucking stupid you have fucking space nazis and they decided to devote a core a third of the movie on why ca- uh, capitalism is bad like no fucking space nazis <laughs> that's the problem here no guys you need to we go up these... there and punch the space nazis in the face what are you doing exactly. focus on the space nazis so people are like so i see that article and i'm like yeah no shit of course they did and i looked in like, like comments and things and, and tweets and stuff where people are like i can't believe they did this to rose and i'm like what why she was not good it wasn't good at all. Granted, the argument of the it, it lack of representation of Asian characters in the movie, if she is the one person, that kind of sucks. Especially right, because, right. I'm sorry, you got the totally the short end of the stick. You got a terrible character in the second movie, and they completely wrote her out of the third movie, where she gets like two lines. Um, there's a lot of people who were really pissed that fucking Pippin, I think... He yeah. had more lines than her and more screen time. I didn't even fucking... I don't... One, they kept calling him by his name in the movie. I didn't even catch his fucking name. Two... He had a name? I just called him Pip the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> I, two, I didn't think... He, like, I, like it. if he had more, it must have been in within, like, a fucking less than a minute more. I don't... I didn't even fucking... Like, I saw him, but I don't think he did anything. He didn't, I mean, he literally did nothing. Sure, Rose I mean, didn't do anything either. He but said who the a, fuck cares? He said a few lines and progressed the yeah. storyline. Domino Gleason. Like, there, were, there was somebody who was really pissed. He was like, what about the fucking space slug? And I'm like, okay, I have no argument for that. Why they created a space fl- slug engineer for the fucking Falcon when Rose is literally an engineer? I'm like, okay, I have no argument there. Because Rose What the fuck sucks. was the space slug? true yeah because rose sucks because that d- character dynamic i really do think that jj okay okay plan. okay so apparently uh dominic mahonigan's character name is beaumont oh maybe they were calling him dominic then <laughs> either way because <laughs> i didn't know his real name either to me he's never gonna be anything but pippin 
<laughs> but either way, it was like I was like I can't, I mean you know I get that if you know you're looking for that res- representation. Actually, he's Mary. Mary, whatever, one of the fucking two. Doesn't matter. They they were Doesn't the same matter. character. He, Doesn't matter. He is forever Mary. But I literally would interchange them while watching the goddamn movie. So yes, yeah, absolutely would. <laughs> I um, never remembered which name. Mary Pippin. Fucking took. <laughs> fucking tooks. I don't know. And Brandy um, books. <laughs> Right, fucking Brandy, goddamn puppets! <laughs> but I was just—I thought that was so goddamn funny that people are so ass hurt about this. I mean, and like he's a midget, right? Like they have no. That's he's not, where he's they've not. chosen to like fucking J.J. Abrams and white cisgendered straight. Like, really? You think that this whole thing, that his whole plan for that, was because he's a racist? I just oh. I thought it was fucking stupid. I'm I'm glad she wasn't a focal point in the movie. I really do think J.J. Uh, Abrams' plan was to have Finn and Ray, which that would be a very interesting, like, relationship. Right. Uh, and they, to me, had more fucking chemistry. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Or if they had gone with the thing that there's a lot of people who were straight up like, no, Finn and Poe. Like, fucking gay kid. fine do that then that would have still had more chemistry did you um did you see any other did you see the interview um with i think his name is i think his name is isaac uh where he basically said that like he's all for that too oscar isaac was all for that too with the disney overlords and that's a quote from him we're not ready for it oh oscar isaac the is he the one who played he plays uh, poe Poe? Oh, yeah, he plays Poe Dameron. I he's, bet Disney's was fucking pissed when he said that. He said that in an interview, and I'm just like, oh yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, so I bet oh, there were fucking Mickey Mouse just foaming at the goddamn mouth when he heard that interview. Oh, that's that. Like, <laughs> oh, that the the interviews around these Star Wars, the, these these two movies specifically. Yeah. Um, are Like, but from Mark Hamill's stuff, in the last before the last movie and then Finn before this movie saying that it was a mess. Um, the whole controversy over the script and stuff where there's a strong theory that that was all bullshit just for viral marketing. Like there's so much shit that that added to it. The, Oh, it's hilarious. Just, just, it's like, it's like, it's like that. It's just, I love the tears, the Disney tears. This, you, you fucking, the shit that they've done, Lucas, their, their, their people at Lucasfilm has done has just been fucking spectacular. Right. It's just awful. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is, it's been, yeah. I don't, like, there's, I, I just, I've never been serious. to see, I've never seen Go a ahead. bigger shitstorm around a thing, you know? Yeah. Like, like, even with, like, Pokemon and, oh my god, look at the textures or stuff like that. Like, like there's just not been a bigger shitstorm for stuff that I've been, like, so very into. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's it's this kind of whole thing where it's at a point, and don't get me wrong, there are horrible trolls there. Absolutely. Um, it's similar to Ghostbusters uh, in Star Wars, where the thing is, they, there are horrible trolls out there. Same thing with um, the chick, the lady who played Rose. Rose. I feel bad that people were like they bullied so her off of Twitter. Towards her, yeah, bullied her off of Twitter. Um, you guys but are at just the same time, at that point, that doesn't mean people who don't like that character didn't like that movie. Uh, hate her because of you know she's of her race or anything like that. Yeah, no, like, I like listen, I, I, like, I'm not, I'm not racist, and I hold zero distaste or disdain for her as a person uh, yeah. like, like she didn't do anything wrong she just sucked at acting but she also i don't i also don't think she had a lot to go on so i also don't even no. really blame her for that so it's like it's like for me i don't hate her for any reason but she was the Rose, catalyst she was she was like the focus for an entire subplot that was awful so it was, it's like really, it's the same thing with like Hayden Christensen. Right. He got so much hate. Hayden Christensen, it wasn't his fault no. that George Lucas doesn't know how people talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his fault that George Lucas doesn't know what human interactions are. You know, like. Yeah. Doesn't, uh, doesn't realize, how, doesn't know how to direct people or anything like that. He did what he could with what he had. 
Uh, and I think that's a similar thing with Rose. Yeah. I did find hilarious, though, one of the articles um, s- called her iconic, call uh, the, the actress iconic. And I was like, really? I don't want to be shitty, but iconic? Really? I mean, she's iconic I- if you're looking at it from the perspective of really shitty characters. <laughs> oh, well, not the character, the actress. Oh, I, okay, that's why she's, I'm like, she's iconic if you're looking at her for people who played really shitty characters. She's iconic. <laughs> she's iconic for Asian characters in Star Wars or Asian actresses in Star Wars. 100 percent. Totally iconic because I don't think there are any other Asian actors in Star Wars. But <laughs> she's not she's not like a huge movie star or anything like that. No, I don't even I know. Don't, her name. I just thought it was hilarious that they were just it's it, it's that that and it's again, it's the media thing of trying to like double down on on the like on the controversy and try and act like how could they it's just it's just fucking dumb but i i laughed when i read that yeah like, <laughs> i gotta be honest i mean she, you know i i would still say she didn't really do anything wrong you know she was just in no. a bad situation she got blamed for it like well, why don't we blame the person who wrote her dialogue and, and who why not blame the person who, who like wrote her character to do these really stupid things? Like her like, stopping Finn yes. at the end of that movie got like the entire fucking fleet wiped out in like one blast. What are you doing? You know? Well, yeah, literally if if Luke Skywalker didn't show up as a force projection, they all die. Pretty they much. Yeah. Up. How? Like, if you want to do, like, the how it should have ended of that movie, Luke's fucking force projection could have showed up and been like, I'm here. Wait, where is everyone? Like, look around and then just turn around and see just, like, stormtroopers kicking bodies. Like, just essentially the fucking when he goes back to his the house at Tatooine and there's just the burning skeletons. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> shit, I was late. Fuck. Like, that would have been the ending. Yeah. Rose, you fucked up. Love doesn't stop space Nazis. <laughs> Why? Why does Ryan Johnson? There was oh, that was another thing of somebody saying that was she gave like the most powerful, uh, amazing speech. No, love doesn't stop space Nazis. Love will not save the galaxy from space Nazis. Yeah, what's wrong with you? Like seriously? Oh what? my god, that was the Finn, dumbest shit I did. have to win read. through love. No, you have to win through superior firepower and tactics. Are you going to go hug Space Hitler? Is that how you're you're going to... Like, is that... You're just going to give him the hug his parents never gave him? I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. Seeing that just just makes you think, like, J.J. must have been sitting there as the credits rolled on that movie. And, I mean, he probably... The first thought was, thank God I'm not doing the third movie. (laughs) 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 <laughs> if he had any inkling, I mean, he must have, he probably was thinking, fuck it, Emperor's coming back. <laughs> fuck it. You know, um, <laughs> I actually, all this shit up. I actually have a bit of shame that I have to admit to, yeah. um, because it just never clicked for me. I never realized that Darth Sidious and Emperor Palpatine were the same person. Yeah. Yeah, like, I... And I'm sitting there looking like, and I found that through my research with the the dark saber, because uh, I had never really heard of the dark. Like I've heard of the black lightsaber, yeah, but I never heard of something referred to explicitly as a dark saber. And so I, I sat there and I was fighting it. I'm like, huh, I feel like I should have known that. And then I go back and, I, and in my memories, I think I can't actually remember seeing the other films in the prequel trilogy. Like I know, I saw Phantom Menace. I saw it multiple times. I can't remember seeing the other two, but I know things that happened in them, and so I'm like, "Huh? Did I ever watch those movies?" Because I feel like as if I had watched those movies, I would have known the Sidious and the Emperor Palpatine were the same person. And I like, I don't, I don't know what to say at this point, but like, I don't know. I'm trying to. I know they called him Sidious. I think they called him Sidious in. Um, the, the prequel, the first, but I don't think they called him Sidious in the original trilogy. I think no, it was no. the prequels. It was the prequels who established his identity because apparently he was originally a senator in in the movie for Naboo or whatever because he's from. Yeah, Naboo. he was the he's he was yeah um he was uh, Senator Palpatine from Naboo. 
Um, uh, here's, but apparently, here's... at some point, he kills Darth Pelagius, takes his spot, and then declares takes over the government and declares himself emperor. So here's the thing. Um, now, because of the elimination of the um, expanded universe. We don't really know exactly his full backstory. Right. I don't think. I don't think they've – unless they've touched on it in the comics, that's where a lot of that's going to come from eventually. Right, But right. with this fucking movie, um, there's uh, there's lots of theories. And I like one of those major theories is that we've never until this movie actually seen the real Darth Sidious. Because right. he's got clones, right? He's got all these fucking right. clones. Yeah, yeah, he does. So – there's an argument to be made that the Palpatine we see or the, the Sidious that we see on that, that planet is the, the original, like who knows how fucking old, right. maybe hundreds of years, maybe a century old, thousands of years, who, who knows how old he could be. The, the uh, theory is that um, Senator uh, Palpatine was a clone of him and maybe one of many clones. The reason I kind of think, and then that clone continued was injured by um, um, Mace Windu from right. Lightning, made his face all fucked up, and then is killed by uh, Vader at the end of the uh, Return of the Jedi. Right. Which, I mean, that's I don't I hope I don't I hope that's not well, I don't know I'm on the fence. Him surviving that fall from the fucking core of the Death Star is questionable stupid. at best. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, like the idea that he was just a clone sitting or, or, or just a dude and then had his clone running the galaxy. But again, he fucking is the master puppeteer, so it makes sense in a way. On top of that, he could have been sitting there creating because then how the where the fuck did the Star Destroyers come from is another fucking question that this movie just I don't know. Fucking fast forward. Don't 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 worry about it. He summoned them. Um he, they could have been. He pulled them from another timeline. I don't even know the guy yeah, could do that. Exactly. He fucking. He's that powerful. Like, like they, they, they. That could have been. They could have been being built throughout the entire fucking time since the old republic. Maybe even. Maybe maybe not that long ago, but since the fucking the events of the original trilogy, they could have been being built in secret that whole time. Meanwhile, Emperor Palpatine is controlling the the empire like yeah it's there's this they fucking created this whole nother like level of possibility with this movie where you know we don't know how we don't know where the fuck um sidious how deep that goes how long has he been that fucking like decrepit basically on life support thing because the only the only clue we get is that the dark side is a fucking pathway to many powers that some might find disturbing or whatever the fuck he says yeah that's it that's all we got pretty much yeah we, we got nothing. i kind of hate that but at the same time i kind of love that because i think it's that's not a bad way to expand the lore that they've cut down severely on after they cut away all of the expanded universe mm-hmm so I don't I, I'm kind of I, I'm kind of cool with the questions of like Darth Sidious. Where'd he come from? He like he obviously killed Plagueis. We've heard Plagueis. He says that Plagueis is the one who developed the ability to survive. Um, yep. And it looks like he also learned that, but maybe didn't. Hey, it's not perfected because he's was, you know, fucking crusty as hell. <laughs> and attached to a machine that was like a fucking yeah. giant arm that was just rotating around and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I loved, I like I said, I love that cheese. The end when he force lightnings the goddamn solar system, the whole fucking atmosphere but is yeah, force like, lightning, and he's just um, I that was those were my favorite parts of that movie. <laughs> they were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they were, yeah, they were exceptionally cheesy, and it was, it was just, ah, it was, it was perfect. I think it was kind of what we needed, and I loved it, so, you know. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, all right, so we talked for an hour or so about Star Wars, so let's move yeah. on to something else. Um, this is going to be a longer episode, because we, we got to give you guys something. 
since we didn't mm-hmm. fucking release anything for the last month. Uh, <laughs> we did one thing. <laughs> I mean, well, like, like I was sitting there and I was looking at our release dates, right? We released something on the 26th of November and or something like that. And then we didn't release anything again until like the 24th of December. And I'm like, holy shit, we literally didn't do shit for a month. <laughs> <laughs> we got it in there technically before the end of the month. Uh, and we're going to have two. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is going out the very last day of the year. So go us. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, December sucks, man. We could have taken the whole month off, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been too sad about it. I mean, December is is awful, and, and we work in retail. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is wrong with us? But anyway, yeah. So I say, um, I want to suggest that we look back at this year, yeah, at the movies, at the video games, and let's let's say we we talk about some of the ones that that maybe stood out to us, yeah, um, in a way. So. Let's go ahead and do that. I say we start with video games, um, just because I already had the list in front of my face. There were there were so many games that uh, came out uh, this year, um, but I think for me the one that stood out the most out of all of them was was Bloodstained: Ritual of the Night. Like yeah, that was fucking awesome. Like that game came out, and I'm just like you know it came out in June. I bought it twice. I was so hyped for it, like. <sighs> It is uh, an amazing game. The Switch port is still shit. Don't buy it yet. But um, you buy it on PC, buy it on Xbox One, buy it on PS4. Uh, you will you will continue playing the fuck out of it. Like especially if you love Metroidvanias, and I I can see that being one of those games like Symphony of the Night where I go back to it every so often and just play through and mm-hmm. beat it in a go or whatever. Um, it, it's it it has that distinct but dubious honor of being the second game on Steam that I've ever 100%ed. Um, the first yeah. being the original Skyrim release because, you know, I'm trash like that. And, like, uh, that game is just... It's, it's, fucking, it's fucking great, and I'm so glad that it came out and that the team behind it is still working on it. They're still updating it. They're still fixing stuff. They're still adding extra content. So, yeah. Fucking Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, I think for me, is is like one of the big standout games from, from this past year. What about you, Luke? Um standout games this year. Um the the number one for me, it, it's actually pretty easy. I, I look through and I a lot of games I played, uh a lot of games I picked up, played a little bit, and then put down. Uh especially five uh, this year so i played a whole bunch of vr games and stuff right but right. the game that stuck with me that i stuck with the longest played through 100 percent that came out this year because we can talk about destiny in a minute uh resident evil 2 yes fucking blew me away um it, capcom has written like what is a remake with this game 100 percent uh a new game set same story and they blew it out of the fucking park. They the they proved that the Resident Evil game game controls and uh, like field of view and all that to make a f- scary game. This scary this game is fucking terrifying. Without all of that, it will have like it, it the sense of like dread while playing that game. Like had me fucking just like I, it's one of those I couldn't play it in the dark. Like, when you <laughs> hear Mr. X behind you just stomping, you're just, oh, my God, oh, my God, I gotta, like, I could play, I played it. I think the longest, like, at one sit down I played was, like, four hours, because after that long, I'm like, I have to stop. I can't go further. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> that... I remember when I beat it, that so was like, no, I'm going to fuck it. Like, I was, like, determined to play through. <laughs> but that game definitely uh was like the number one game for me this year because it just holy crap man was that a good game yeah i know i mean that was one of those things that i picked up at full price because of how everybody was raving about it and i grabbed mm-hmm. it on steam and admittedly i haven't played it at all since and not because like it scares me or anything i absolutely fucking adore resident evil games um mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I haven't, uh, 
found time to sit down and play it because that's one of those things like you said it, it's it's really involved it's it's in there so i haven't i haven't had time to sit down and actually play it but i do have it installed so yay i did play the one shot demo and i i actually i did enjoy it so i don't know but yeah, yeah. yes good game good game um I think another game for me is uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, yeah. Um, like, that game got so much fucking attention from me this year. I think um, on my Switch, uh, I think I have, like, 200 and over 265 hours on it. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Um, it's just, like, I love Fire Emblem games. Always have. I love strategy games like that. And uh, Three Houses definitely got a huge chunk of my attention this year. Uh, like, I, yeah, 210 hours, I'm sorry. 265 is for Breath of the Wild. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I love everything about that game. The, the different difficulty modes, the branching storyline, all the, like, downtime interactions. Like, they're actually legitimately enjoyable. Going around, fishing, cooking, and... Uh, you're doing random stuff and increasing your professor level and getting access to more and more things. Um, yeah. Like, it, it's a good game. It, it's a great fucking Fire Emblem series. I feel like it brings us... I feel like it, it takes you back sort of to the roots of the game while bringing that into, like, the modern era in a way. And I don't know. Like, all the interactions felt meaningful the storylines were impactful and like got you involved. And like the very first time that I did Edelgard story route, I was like, Oh my God, this is so good. I got to do it again. And so I did, I played through the entire game again. I I've probably played through this game four times now. Um, I'm kind of on my fifth playthrough, but I haven't touched it as much because of other games that I've gotten into lately. But yeah, you know, fire emblem three houses. That's another just top game for me from this year. Yeah, they did such a great job of like, and something I didn't really expect them to do or think they would or could do um, with changing up Fire Emblem and yes. kind of changing the, what you expect out of that game and a story where, I mean, when they, when that game was announced and they talked about, Oh, you're going to be a teeth. I was like, this is going to be terrible. Mm-hmm. I had no, I didn't, I didn't have good expectations for that game, and lo and behold, it was really fucking good. Like it's really, really goddamn good. I it love is. that game. Like it's amazing. Like, like you, it, it subverted your expectations. <laughs> yes, in a good way. <laughs> in a good I way. I didn't expect to play a Fire Emblem, and that would be the way that it would, uh, it would go about and be such a fucking blast to play. Yeah. Uh, but it it really did. Uh, yeah, that that's a great fucking game. Um, the, the other, I guess, other major one that I played, like, Rage 2 was pretty good. Um. Right, right. Jedi Fallen Order is good. Uh, I've talked a lot about that recently. Um, the, let's see. Man, (coughs) I haven't, I, I, I wish I could say. I had put a lot of time. That's been my problem this year is I didn't really put a lot of time in the games that I did pick up. Um, right, right. Blasphemous came out this year and I haven't really played much of that. Uh, Destiny two fucking took over basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, my yeah, well, goddamn life practically. I had 229 hours in that game now. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not far behind him at all. I can, I, I, yeah. I have like 214 or something like that, like, mm-hmm. uh, 215 hours. So yeah, like that game has pretty much taken over our entire fucking life. Like even, I haven't even bought uh, Halo Reach came out early for the Master Chief bundle and I didn't even buy that, even though I love that game. And by the way, that's like the last des- uh, Bungie made Halo game and Destiny reminds me of why I fucking loved Halo. Why that was one of my my probably my all time favorite video game series, up there with Zelda, and um, fucking probably those two, the, the top two. Uh, this game, it, it's a fucking great game, but it's not a game that came out this year. The other one that uh, it, it was another fucking remake was um, Link's Awakening. 
Yes, yes, Link's That's Awakening. That's just a beautiful. I liked. I'm one of. I, I'm one of the few. Not few. I don't know. I know you weren't a huge fan of the visuals at first. I know a I lot love... of people. A lot of people like absolutely adore the visuals. So like, I yeah. I am one of the people um, that are basically in the minority. Yeah, I absolutely love the aesthetic of it, looking like little toy figures running around. Uh, it's that game is just a Nintendo knows how to do a remake themselves. Uh, that game is fucking awesome. I think I I. I didn't quite finish it, um, but you know I put a hell of a lot more time on it than I did on the original Game Boy version. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I haven't finished it. Yet. I'm sitting very much at the end. Um, mm. Like I'm ready to go fight the Windfish, and uh, you know I, I've just put I've put time into playing with Dampy's uh, Dungeon Maker, and, and that's because that's just a really cool little feature that I'm glad they added. Um, I've only got around 15 hours on the game, though, which for me is like, okay, that kind of sucks um, because it's such a great game, but you you can complete it so quickly. And that's with, like, getting all but, like, 12 heart containers. You know, I've gotten, like, 40 of the... 40-something of the, she, see, uh, the secret seashell. So I've already got, like, the level 2 sword, the noble sword, as yeah. it's called. Like, I, I've done probably around 90 percent of what the game has to offer and secrets wise and i'm like mm. but the game has definitely been um enjoyable by a pretty good pretty good margin you know it still has the charm and the quir- quirks of the original um but just updated for for a newer a, you know, just more modern times um i did like the art style at first because I don't know, like like Zelda's cartoony, it's fine. Uh, I and it's it's one hundred percent my fault because I was expecting more of a Breath of the Wild style remake, and I didn't get that. Yeah. And I don't know why I was expecting that. Uh, I think for me, Breath of the Wild was one of those games that was uh, so good and and such a huge departure from what we normally got that that is now Zelda to me. You know, me, this 25, 30, no, 30 plus year fan of the game series. And it's like, like Link's Awakening is great. Link to the Past is great. Ocarina of Time is great. Majora's Mask is still my favorite of the Zeldas, but Zelda is now Breath of the Wild. Like that is Zelda to me. That's what Zelda, they need to take that formula and start expanding on it and start making it bigger and improving the things that were not so great. Like that is now Zelda to me. So that's how I, I felt. That's how I felt going from, um, Ocarina of time and Majora's mass to wind waker. Yeah. Cause right. I didn't, I, I didn't that 100%. I, I agree with you that when, at least with this, I could kind of take it as, well, this is a remake. It's not a core game. Right. When wind waker came out, I was fucking mad. Because we'd seen in Game Informer those little teeny snippets of essentially what might as well have become Twilight Princess, where you see Link fighting Ganon, it looked more realistic and badass. I mean, and you, then they announced fucking Wind Waker. I mean, and you don't, you don't, you gotta like remember like the videos they showed off at I think it was E three like three years before of them showing that that big sword fight between Link and Ganon, and it was like yeah. Well, Ganondorf specifically, and it was like, it was realistic, and it was gritty, and it was dark, and it was cool as fuck, and you're like, yeah, give me that! And, you know, that's not what you got at all. And No. With uh-huh. Wind Waker, Wind Waker, like, came out. you know, it was it was the complete opposite of what they had, uh, what they had shown off, so. Mm. So, like, but, they, yeah. They have subverted your expectations, <laughs> So. And it still it ended up being really good. But I do agree with you. When the next Zelda comes out, it needs to be it needs to have that level of polish that um, the uh, fucking uh, Breath of the Wild had. Yeah, that that scope uh, not doesn't need some of the things in that game. But I don't know. I, I don't know how much I would be happy if they like, OK, we're going to make it a which then again that's part of what made it amazing is that they can take and play around with the franchise and do something new each time. So who knows what they do with the next one? 
Yeah, uh, I, just I mean, hope it's good. <laughs> I mean, I think I think the next one is going to continue in that Breath of the Wild tradition. Oh, that's right. They already showed. Yeah, <laughs> considering that they've already showed that off. Uh, yeah, I absolutely one hundred percent like expect that to continue in that in that tradition and and keep going in that style. Um, I'm I'm at least actually for excited. one more game. At least for one more game, right? Because they've already said here this is a preview for Breath of the Wild two, and it's like. Yes, that's. I want more. Uh, I want more Breath of the Wild, um, just with less uh, weapons breaking and and more stuff to do. You know, like fill yeah. your fill your big open world with just a few more things in between, like villages and stables and stuff. You know, like throw a mini game here or there, or uh, just throw some more monsters in the way. Give us more monster variety, too. You know. I don't know, but yeah, Breath, you know, that, yeah, Link's Awakening is, is another uh, really, really good one, I, I thought, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and then, I, I'm i not really seeing anything else on here that I'm like, I was so very much into, like, I, I'm glad that at this year's Game Awards that Sekiro took home Game of the Year, totally deserves it, it's one of those games I want to get into, I've not actually had a chance to sit down and play it, I mm-hmm. do own it. Um, one hundred percent. Am going to play it at some point, but yeah. Um, so I don't know. Uh, anything else on about there? um, <laughs> Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield, best games yeah, ever. Yeah, best games. I ever. uh, the I did most of the V. Oh, I guess the VR stuff did come out this year. Beat Saber was awesome. Gorn was fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, games like I said, Destiny kind of took away most of my time devil may cry five is all aw- is great uh i've only got a little over like an hour and a half in it right but um, it's a fun game i i've it's just one of those games i need to go back and pick up uh it's why i don't like live service games because you know, when um, they are good they take away take all your time <laughs> yeah i do i do want to touch on one small thing uh, mm-hmm. like i like you guys have you ever heard of arlo arlo is a hardcore like nintendo youtuber and his shtick is he's like um he's a blue puppet kind of like elmo but not not weird and creepy and yeah. um he's actually really fun he's cool to watch i watch him now he's he's in my subscription list uh, which mm-hmm. is very short and um he did an actual review on sword and shield he went pretty in depth into it and he's mm-hmm. usually very very positive on Nintendo, like he's a brand ambassador for them and all that stuff, and um, even he's like, "Yeah, don't buy this game unless you're a hardcore Pokemon fan." Yeah, um, and I'm sitting there, I'm I'm watching his video, and he's like, "This is all the good stuff." It's like, "Oh, okay, that's cool. That looks neat." This is all the bad stuff, and he was pointing <laughs> out, you know, this is this is like the textures are terrible, and the big open world is not big and open. It only connects to two of the cities. There's not actually different biomes. It's all just one big area that you open up more access to as you go. You got the whole, you can't even catch a Pokemon until you have a certain badge, which is dumb. I, and, and like, they don't take the training wheels off at all during this game. You're always guided by hand. He was pointing out an interaction where he was told to go to a hotel or whatever. The hotel was literally next door to the building he was at. He goes yeah. out. Someone talks to him. He takes like a step to the next area. Someone talks to him. He gets to the hotel. Someone talks to him again. It's like, why? Just stop <laughs> fucking handholding me and let me play the game. You know, like, and so like all of his annoyances with the with the game would have been major psychotic fucking hatreds for me. So yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I, I, it's one of those things where, yeah, I, you know, it's probably gonna piss you off. So it's like now, if I'm just mess- that's why I'm I'm not gonna play Sekiro. I'm <laughs> I am not the demographic for those games. I'm just like okay, I I will you know I'm sure that's a great game, but I don't I don't care to play something that hard. <laughs> like for me, games like that, that style. I, like for me, games are like like that. Or gym, like, you know, 
Dark Souls and Bloodborne and, and, and games of that type or of that like thing where they're really difficult, but they're difficult in a way that's, I don't know, fair, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I like those kinds of games. Now, I haven't played Dark Souls in a very long time, and I, I don't know, maybe I'll get back into them one day. Um, but Sekiro was one of those games that definitely caught my attention just because, you know, it, it, it's more about skill than it is about anything else. It, it, I guess, yeah. I, you know. And I, I like those kinds of challenging games. So it's like one of those things where maybe I'll check that out, maybe I'll enjoy it. Or maybe I'll end up, th- you know, throwing my monitor out of a window. Who knows? Let's find out. Yeah. So, you know. yeah. so I, I did so. end up, I did end up buying it, and I do plan on playing it eventually. But I have to first um, break Destiny's hold on me, because, <laughs> um, like you said, it, it's it's just one of those things that like it just it sucks you the fuck in, and it's so interesting to me because Destiny's not normally the kind of game I play. I like shooters, yes, and I like, you know, like co-op shooters and stuff like that. But, you know, like the whole MMO aspect, I typically don't care for MMO style type games. But the way Destiny does it is just it's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's because it doesn't feel like an MMO. You can still it, it feels like your own experience that just happens to take place around other people. Right, yeah, for sure. Like, like the whole everybody has their own loot pool, so there is no nobody ninjing your loot. Like that, that that is really, really good, um, and I, I do like that. Yeah, and like yeah. you know, the shooting on this game is so so solid and so so satisfying. You know, like the yeah, gameplay I, in general is just. Oh. That's the most impressive thing to me about that game, is how good the shooting mechanics feel and that they were able to pull that off and still have it be like this big online thing Mm -hmm. i don't know it's just it is fun as fuck did you um have you from season of the dawn here did you get Mm -hmm. the steel feather repeater yet steel feather repeater it's Uh, a it's a obelisk quest from the shore where you activate the first uh, sundial obelisk thing um, is that the assault rifle? Yes. Yeah, the outer rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh the first God. one you get. I'm like, I'm absolutely in love with that weapon. It's, it's just, it's yeah. so satisfying in every regard. I, I, it, I, I haven't, <laughs> I don't have all the auto rifles in the game, but I'm convinced it's the best. Like, yes, absolutely. It's so fucking great. It, it, um, it's so sad. I don't know. It, like from the sound to the feel. To the actual damage, the fire rate, like, like, it, it just, it, it's, I, I am just blown away by how satisfying this gun is to use. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, I want to, I want to play the game and all I do is I'll run around shooting shit with this gun. I won't even like do anything else. And I'll realize, oh shit, I picked up like 80 bounties and none of them involve an auto rifle. Maybe I should switch. I was just going to say. It is my favorite thing when I pick up those bounties. It says either kinetic or auto rifle. And I'm like, yeah, okay, got that done. That's easy because I almost never switch off of that gun. Yes, <laughs> it's it's so fucking amazing. Like I don't. It's like why is this so good? I don't know, but I love it. Like I, yeah. I sat there. And one of the first things I did was change one of his properties. Which dropped the magazine size, but then I just threw the backup mag mod on it. I was like, "Well, there we go. Yep. We're fucking good." And now I'm like, "I just oh, it's it's, it's a small time bullet hose, and it's not the best at some of the beefier enemies you fight, but for like almost everything from mid level elites down to the puds, it's just so fucking good to just kill everything in front of you with." Yeah, it's 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 one of the guns that I put the level 10 masterwork yes um the things that it has on it are just fucking great uh speaking of because we're gonna do destiny corner for a second here that basically that replaced like i said my kinetic assault rifles um i went and got arc logic like you told me i needed to Mm -hmm. the um it's an uh uh uh, elemental assault rifle and i got the i don't know if you get it automatically with this these abilities it's one of the guns that has random Mm-hmm. 
but when I got it from the quest line you get it from, I got it with a trait called Overflow. Uh, yeah. Meaning when I pick up pick up special or heavy ammo, uh, it goes it gets goes beyond its normal ammo capacity. Right. Um, so as far as an assault rifle goes, I switch to it and it'll have 98 rounds when it's at full capacity. Right. Of electric assault rifle ammo, as well as having triple tap. The, oh my god! If I hit three precision shots in a row, uh, I return around to the magazine. It really is the assault rifle version of the um, risk runner. Yes. I just pull that gun out, and it just hoses all day long. <laughs> <laughs> It just doesn't need to reload. And I will be in firefights and I'll get kill everything and then be tapping the reload button and the gun's not reloading because I still haven't even gone through the extended <coughs> foot. You're like, fuck yeah. Yeah. No, no, that gun, I, I fucking, I will have that gun equipped if my assault rifle's not equipped in my kinetic slot or it, it's, I go between those two. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry guys, that was Destiny Corner for a second. Uh, let's talk about movies real quick because I gotta go to work tonight. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're getting it, we're, and we're running a little bit long, which is fine. You know, but yeah. Yeah. Um. So look at the movies this year. Movies are like, uh, I mean, the big one is Endgame for me. I've, oh, obviously, oh, yeah. like oh, kind yeah. of a no brainer. Um, and, and we've I we went over that a lot. So. My first, like, I won't call it a surprise, but Hobbs and Shaw, I fucking love that movie so goddamn much. <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw was just, it was exactly what they said. It was, like, exactly what those movies have turned into. Just like, a fucking stupid, over-the-top action mess that is, like, it is so fun <laughs> and so good. I mean, it helps that David Leach directed it, or so it's like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you've got um, The Rock and Jason Statham and Idris Elba. Like, you can't fucking go wrong with that movie. That's no, just absolutely so not. Funny. Yeah, no, you just, you just, you just can't, just, man. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Didn't, uh, oh my god, didn't John Wick three come out this year too? Yep, Parabellum was this year. So yeah. Also fucking amazing action movies action movies kind of I, and i mean I, i'm very much that kind of basic dude i action movies are my bread and butter uh, oh, yeah, and no. this year we had some fucking amazing action movies john wick um hobbs and shaw and game uh far from home like it's this has been a fucking great action movie year yes it, it really has um i, I yeah i i uh I get. I definitely have to. I think. I think John Wick three is is my my kind of movie of the year because it, it took mm -hmm. everything that the first ones did, and it just went so far fucking over the top. It was just like yes, it was like yeah. watching an anime, like just that edgy fucking, you know, like edge lord, anime just come to life because of just how much they did and how so. They just said fuck it, went balls to the wall, and I loved it. Um, and it was and cheesy. And it still as hell. lived up to. Yeah, um, like like it totally lived up to the first. Movie. Yes. So good. Uh, like like you still got to see all of the John Wick stuff, but then yeah. then they just added they they peppered in, you know that that dumb animu shit that just made it so much better. And so much more over the top, and that being over the top, just I loved it. It it, it makes it makes me giddy, makes my schoolgirl heart flutter. You know, like yes. So I mean, yeah, that that was that was it for me. Um, yeah, yeah, John Wick three was fucking awesome. Um, I fucking I, 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 Shazam was kind of a surprise. Uh, I didn't see it when it came out. I saw it like a couple months later. Um, but Shazam was a really good fucking movie to come from DC. And I like I'm looking forward to the sequel to that movie. And I really I don't I don't even know now because of how fucking chaotic uh, Warner Brothers is anyway, if they're still doing a separate movie for. Um, oh, fuck, I can't remember his villain's name, uh, but The Rock playing Black his, Adam. 
Black Adam, yeah. yeah. I don't know if they're doing that separately because I know I just saw recently something about the Shazam sequel. Like, it's got a date now that I thought was 2021, or maybe it's 22 and the Rock's uh, Black Adam movie is coming out this year or coming year. But I don't know. Either way, I cannot. I just want more of that. I I just want – I'm pissed that they're doing it in two separate movies. I'd rather just see Shazam 2 be the introduction of Black Adam, but fuck it. I yeah, just want know, more of that to come out. Yeah, whatever at this point. Yeah, um, I, I love that movie. So, yeah, no, I, I think that's – that's yeah, give me more John Wick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I loved Endgame. Don't get me wrong, man. I'm right there with you. We went and saw it twice. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was fantastic, but – John Wick, man. Um, that end- Endgame has the scene, some scenes that will, that just, like, I've just watched those sequences over and over again. Yeah. More than I think, I, I can't really, I, I'm there are movies that I've watched parts of over and over, but I don't know if there's any that I've watched as much as between fucking On Your Left and the very, uh, the I Am Iron Man. Yeah. Like those two moments recut with different things and music. Recut, it just, it just as being almost meme, like well, being memes on their own. I fucking ah, that movie, it's it's so fucking great. Um, I've watched it two or three times on Blu-ray. Same thing with John Wick three, by the way. Yeah. That I love watching that movie, but and Endgame was good. Far From Home was good too. It's yep. just as a standalone. I, I'm not tired of Marvel movies, but. There's just there's so much. There is. I mean, even more. There's like kind of excited for it, but I'm a little worried. There's like thirty something movies. It's just. (laughs) I'm glad the the next movie being Black Widow, being almost kind of like a it seems like a spy kind of thing. I'm glad because it doesn't it doesn't feel like uh, your typical like like I'm going to see a superhero movie. It feels like I'm going to see something different. At least right now, and and I don't know if ever, anyone else feel that way, but that's the way I'm looking at it because uh, it's not necessarily superhero fatigue, right. but I like that there's something else on uh, coming out. <laughs> I mean, I, I I'm like I, I when they said that Endgame was going to be the the it, it for a while and and all that, I'm like, all right, that's that's actually fine. Right. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Give me some standalone stuff, or give, give me some simpler things. And you know, like you said, the the whole Black Widow thing is like, yeah, yeah that's that's actually that's fine. You know, like that's gonna be that's gonna be okay. So, I'm I'm good. Definitely. Give me something simpler. Give me something much smaller time that that maybe goes into a more specific story, and I'll be, I'll be okay with that. Um, yeah, which they really needed to do because now we're gonna have the Disney Plus stuff come out too. Yeah, that's that's gonna be uh, like all things, <laughs> all things Marvel basically. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm good with that. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm ha- I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, the other movie that was like number one of not an action movie because all, basically it feels like everything I saw was an action movie. Uh, the Joker. Yeah, Fucking great goddamn movie. Yeah, no, the Joker was the Joker was actually pretty uh, pretty fantastic. Like, mm-hmm. I was completely for it, one hundred percent. It was it was actually a, a a much better movie than than you would have thought it was, and um, yeah, like it blew me away, and it was it was for what it was for what it was meant to be. Like, it was much much better than I would have thought it was. So yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed the Joker. I almost forgot about that one. Yeah. That was good. Joker was good. Yeah, yeah. That movie surprised the hell out of me. It could have been a terrible, terrible movie, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um. Did you have you sat down and watched The Witcher yet? No, I've only watched the first episode. Okay. Actually, I kind of watched the second episode, but I fell asleep. Um more because I was really high and watching it in, when I was tired. Um, but it was kind of funny since it was kind of like in and out. So one moment it's like, it was like the Witcher is, um, 
fucking I can't even remember where he was at the beginning of the episode. Oh, he's walking and talking with um, Dandelion and they're doing their thing. And then I saw him them get captured. And then the next mo- moment, I kind of like come back into consciousness. And there's the like, unfortunately, like this, the, the disabled, not really disabled, um, physically disabled girl who has magic powers and then I go and I kind of wake up again and it's dandelion and I kind of went back and forth. And then at one point I got like, cause I have surround sound turned on and it was pretty loud. All of a sudden it fucking was the fight scene between Geralt and some monster demon fuck thing where it's screaming every five seconds and it scared the shit out of me. I was like, Oh my God, what happened? Ah, The last thing I saw is fucking, Carlton and Dandelion were talking with elves. Oh my god, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> um, it was fucking. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna stop. I have to rewatch that whole episode. <laughs> so, like, if we're gonna talk about like like shows of the year for me, um, yeah. The Witcher takes that easily. Um, oh, did you like it more than Mandalorian? I liked it more than Mandalorian. Yeah. Like, Ooh, okay. like, I love The Mandalorian. Like, it, it's yeah. a great fucking show. It 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 keeps its, you know, it keeps its pace well. It And it, it stays good by staying simple. Um, mm-hmm. But The Witcher will, does have some faults, of course. You know, there are some production value issues. And some of the acting isn't um, all that fantastic. But um, as an overall presentation, I have to say I love The Witcher over... Yeah. The Mandalorian, like if we're putting them on a scale of like one to ten, Mandalorian's like nine, which is like nine and a half, maybe. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, TV show of the year is, is what Netflix is The Witcher. Like they yeah. knocked it out of the park. Like if you are a fan of the series, whether video game or movie or not movie but book, go watch it. Um, if you've only ever played the video games, like I have, uh, go in with no expectations of what you know already. Um, it's definitely not the like story wise. No, it's barely the story at all, which I I had heard going into it and that it's different. But honestly, people like, he doesn't seem he's not very different from Geralt in the games. He doesn't feel different. Um, he does. He doesn't feel that different. He very much does. Maybe it comes maybe later on the first yeah, episode. Yeah, like I said, you, you've only watched the first episode. Uh, yeah. Watching the whole episode, the girl you get in this in this uh, show is more in line with what you get in the books. Where he's, you know, he's he's grizzled, but he's a little more grumpy. He's more of an asshole. He's way more sarcastic and witty, and more fun. Um, well, maybe not more fun, but you know, he's he's different, but not like in okay. that bad way, not in a way that detracts from. Him. Um, and like I said, the story follows. Like I said, it follows the books more than it follows the games. By obviously for duh, because that's what they said it was going to be. Um, the game is like the movie is just rather the show is is really good though. Um, it, it explores things like they change Dandelion's name to Javier. Well, I don't know why. I don't remember why, but that's his name now. Well, that's his name of the show. But otherwise, all the characters you're familiar with are going to be there. You are going to recognize characters. Uh, Triss is different, but like you recognize him and go, oh yeah. So there's already a feeling of familiarity, even if all you've done is play the games like I have. Although I do Mm. know some of what's happened in the books through discussions and all that. Um, like the show is just, it's good and it's yeah. weird the way it, it progresses and like minor spoiler, um, it, it shows timelines, it shows time differently. Like yeah. You, you I had heard going, going into it. I heard that it, it jumps around, um, especially for the first few, um, Basically, Epis- like, like episodes, the entire the entire season is jumping around until like the okay. very last yeah. episode, and then the Which, very last episode happens in uh, present time, right? Like any time, okay. uh, like another, another mild spoiler. Anytime you see Siri on screen doing things, um, that's like the present timeline. But I everything else, everything else until the very last episode is what happens leading up to Siri, you know being Siri and running away, which yeah. we, we do know she does. That, that does, that does happen. We know that that happens. Even, even us game scrubs know that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah they, the first episode, they, they, they have introduced essentially the prophecy of, you'll find the girl, the girl in the woods. 
the girl in the woods, you're the girl in the woods, she's your destiny, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And the chick kept saying that. And, and by the end of the episode, when Geralt didn't find a girl in the woods, I was like, oh, that's diff. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Even though I was, like I said, I was really, really stoned. So I was like, okay, that's why I don't understand what the fuck is going on. I'm fine. But I'm still, like I said, fine with it because the action whole in that first episode that and I I know it continues because I've heard oh, I have heard a little yes. bit about how much the fight choreography the, the fight, fight choreography, choreography in this show oh my is god it's it's top fucking notch it's top it's like it's like oh. it's like John Wick but with swords <laughs> yes like seriously it's it's this. so perfect like Henry Cavill got so into being Geralt and and like fighting with a sword and just just being the witcher and it's just like you can't help but be like jesus christ this is impressive like he 100 percent steps it up like i i i liked henry cavill as superman even though i think he was given nothing to work with in um man of steel and barely anything to work with in bvs and then he's not even in the fucking movie for 90 percent of justice league and then when he is it's awful until his one good line uh, or the end of <laughs> I the movie really. justice yeah <laughs> punch <laughs> the end of the movie he's good. the end of the movie he's superman right but like for the most part he's never been superman to me not not really not like in attitude right um, right and even even then i still liked him as that in this henry cavill does so well being Geralt. and even though Geralt is supposed to be an emotionless um character in the first episode, he gives way more emotion than he ever did as Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, I'm, no, he he is he is a fantastic fucking actor, and like the yeah. dude is he's on and point looks it too. He didn't, does. Didn't yeah. think he would. Didn't think they'd pull that off as well as they did. He one hundred percent like in the few fights I've seen, and like I said, I woke up in the middle of him fighting some fucking demon bitch, and right. that's just was so fucking great they have he has the fucking magic and shit ah just mwah. yeah I, I like i said one episode i was go i would have binged that uh like all day today if we didn't have a podcast to do i mean that's that's my plan once once we're done here i hit stop recording and i start editing i'm just gonna go and watch the, the series watch it again because i yeah. i need to it's it's amazing and it's just Yes, yes, give me um, more. My show, like I said, I'm not sure. I, I'm kind of both this, uh, the Mandalorian and the boys were like neck and neck for my show of the year. Uh, <laughs> because those are really the only two shows I can even think of that I watched beginning to end and loved. Um, I, 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 There was this season, uh, the final season of this one show that was supposed to come out and then just never did. But um, this, the boys was so fucking amazing had going into that not ever having read that comic book knowing that it was just like realistic look superheroes had no idea that that show was going to be that fucking extreme and that that awesome just a a realistic take uh and at the same time something that was like had a lot of drama to it and had a lot of stakes uh, and the boys is a show totally everybody needs to go check out on Amazon prime. Um, that's another, like I'm sitting here with a uh, complete anticipation for season two right, because that right. show leaves off Mandalorian does not like I'm kind of a spoiler. It doesn't leave you with a cliffhanger when the season ends, it ends and it's like, okay, what's the next chapter? Um, the boys complete fucking opposite. That show leaves you like half chub, like, Nah, nah, bitch. You want to know what happens next? Because it's like it doesn't end well. It doesn't end on like a oh, let's see what. No, it's it's a fucking total cliffhanger, and it was so good. Uh, it, fucking the acting in that is amazing, and just that concept of like yeah, if re normal people had superpowers, they'd probably <laughs> be assholes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it would not be as like selfless and amazing as Superman. He might decide, hey, I have all these fucking powers. 
why should I ever pay or do like pay for anything or, you know, have to, you know, do anything ever again? Like, no, you can't make me do something. <laughs> I'm fucking invulnerable. Yep. <laughs> He has a line at one point where he's like, I will laser eye you. I will laser eye the shit out of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that show, so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Um, Corey is all hell. Like, <laughs> so the first episode, and they have this, like, the main character's girlfriend is, is killed by a superhero who can't stop um it sets that tone of oh that's what i'm in for with this movie or with this show yeah but, um yeah it's it's a deep story it's it's cool that's actually one thing i want to mention with the witcher too it is <laughs> very gory oh yeah yeah, yeah they, they this is like fucking medieval sword fighting shit he that first that first fight where he fights like ten dudes at once. He's stabbing motherfuckers straight through the throat. He's cutting, cutting their off fucking heads. arms and heads and legs. Oh, and, oh yeah, it's, brutal it's a and very satisfying. As fuck. It's very brutal and satisfying. You know, it's 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 like anime levels of blood, and it's amazing, and I love it. Um, yeah, well done though. Not stupid anime levels. Yeah, of blood. no, 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 no. Like it's, like like it's, it's not, not blood fountain. It's not Blood Fountain, but it's one of those things like, where it's like it, it's actually quite realistic too with, with a lot of that oh, stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, it's 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 great. And when you sit there, like like I want to gush one more time mm-hmm. because apparently Henry Cavill was so determined to play Geralt that he called Netflix several times as soon as he heard the role was <laughs> open, and even wanted to grow his hair out and dye it instead of using a wig. Yeah, he was apparently a huge fan of the Witcher series. Yeah, before this. Did you hear that uh, he was, also uh, kept his costume? Oh, yeah. that's I'm not surprised. I'm glad he did. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I want to see a stream now where he's playing The Witcher 3 in full <laughs> Witcher garb and just in character. What is this shit? I, rem- I remember before, like, uh, I don't rem- know if it was um, before Justice League, after Justice League, like, with all of the stuff with WB, not nobody knowing what is happening um is he still playing superman and whatnot things like that that like he's done some weird shit on like instagram or twitter where he's like had like a, an action figure and be like i'm still superman so i kind of wanted to see random posts of him like he's just sitting there drinking coffee in the morning in the full girl arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh that would be cool or if he fucking puts on like the, the shoulder pads and shit and then has the fucking Superman S. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. All right. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Um, anything else you want to touch on? Uh, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. All right. I, probably some stuff. We definitely some stuff we missed. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if like the next episode of us like, Oh, by the way, I forgot. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I didn't, I don't. I didn't watch any new anime this year. That would have been something I would have brought, you know, talked about. Because everything that like has been out, that has been like, you know, the the the, the stuff people have talked about being really good. Then they'll see the fucking advertisements for Crunchyroll. And I'm like, hey, I really need to watch that show. I just did none of it this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, kind of the same. Fucking Demon Slayer looked really cool. Um. Then uh, I didn't even watch the new season of Attack on Titan. And that was a, like the only reason I had Crunchyroll for the longest time other than for Super. Right, right. Uh, of course. And after that, I was like, I, I cancel it and just never watched it. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much how I am. Like, I didn't watch anything new this year, really, uh, anime wise. It just does. There just wasn't anything that caught my eye. Um I did rewatch uh, Full Metal Lock and His Brotherhood, but I, I do that every so often anyway. Um, yeah, that deserves a rewatch. That show was fucking awesome. Um, I mean, it's still my favorite anime to this day. I nothing nothing has topped it for me for overall presentation and all that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I think I think that's it for me too. So uh, there you go, guys. That's our year end of uh, 2019 special. Um, yep. 
we hope you enjoyed us talking about it. We gave you a, a much longer episode than, than normal. Hopefully to mm. kind of make up for the fact that we didn't really shit for the last month. <laughs> yeah. You know. Fucking how bad December was. So, oh my, yeah. December was just so, so terrible overall, man. I just, oh my God. Like it was mm. just, it, it was, work was shit. Home life was shit. You know, whatever. It's over now. It's behind us. It's Christmas done. is over. over. Fuck you, Christmas. Just get through New Year's and done with holidays for yeah, a while. Yeah, no, like, dude, like, At I least work, fucking the most annoying ones. I work the next four days, like, and then I'm off until the 11th. So, like, I have the entire, like, first 10 days of the year off, and I'm going to enjoy them. Yeah. So, but anyway, you know, if you guys liked what we did, give us a like, share, subscribe, comment. Tell us what we did wrong. Tell us how much we sucked. Give us something we missed. You know, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you really, really want to help us, join our community, Discord. Uh, it's all linked in the video description on YouTube. It's all linked on the website. The website's back up and running now, by the way. We got that fixed. And give us some money on Patreon. Get your name in our credits. Maybe we'll talk about you. Shout you out. I'm going to shout out Ori and uh, Rupert. Our only two <laughs> <laughs> patrons since we started the Patreon. Yes. So, you know, you guys are awesome. Thank you for giving us money every month and letting us do dumb shit with it. And yeah. uh, that's it for the Ungodly And Geeks. interacting in the yeah. Discord. Yeah, no, they, they, they post things every now and then. We have chats and it's, it's kind of neat. Um, so, yeah, just whatever. So, for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day and happy new year and Merry Christmas and happy Kwanzaa and, and Hanukkah and all, all that, that shit. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Fuck yeah.